Okay, let's look at the problems from form A on your integration quiz. Uh, so question number one is not even a u substitution. A lot of people attempted to do substitution with u equals x cubed minus one, which isn't a terrible idea because that is in parentheses and it kind of looks like it should be u sub. The problem is if you try u sub, the derivative of that u is 3x squared dx, and I only have a single x. I don't have an x squared, so I cannot account for that du, which means this is not substitution. And this one is probably the easiest one on the quiz because all you have to do is distribute that 4, which will turn this into the antiderivative of 4x to the 4th minus 4x. And then we have a nice power rule. So I'm going to ignore that 4, and then I'm going to add 1. The 4 plus 1 is 5. Divide by the new exponent minus, and this is 4x to the first, so when you add 1 to the exponent of 1, that's x squared, you divide by 2, and you can leave it like that, or you can reduce that second one into just 2x squared plus c. There's number 1. Number 2 is a u sub problem, and every time I have a fraction, I check for two things. One is the top degree less than the bottom, which doesn't apply here because these are trig functions. The second one is if the top can be the derivative of the bottom, and in this case it can. Uh, if you want to go full u substitution, my u would be the entire denominator. A lot of people chose only the sine x, which could work, but it actually works better if you use the entire denominator. The derivative of 5 minus 3 sine x is negative 3 cosine x. Uh, I have the cosine x dx in the problem. All I'm missing is that negative 3, so I'll put a negative 3 here. I'll offset that with a negative one-third, and when I do that, my top becomes the derivative of the bottom, and if you have the top being the derivative of the bottom, then the answer is the natural log of the denominator. Just make sure you put it in absolute values. If you wanted to go with the full substitution, then you would take out the negative three cosine x dx, and that would become the du. My numerator is in the du, so I'll put a 1 up there, and my denominator is u, and the antiderivative of 1 over u is the natural log of u. And then you'll just plug your u back in. So there's number 2. Number 3, uh, another fraction. So the two things I check is the top the derivative of the bottom, which it is not, and is the top degree less than the bottom, which it is not. And I will fix that second issue by dividing the bottom into the top. So if I'm dividing by x minus 3, I can use synthetic. I'll put a positive 3 outside my little magic box here. And my coefficients are 2x squared, negative 3x, and a negative 8. Bring down my 2, then I have 3 times 2 is 6. Negative 3 plus 6 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. Negative 8 plus 9 is 1. And that last number is your remainder. And then we count up by powers of x, starting with x to the 0, so that's a constant 3, and 2 times x there. That is not your answer. What that is is a reduced version of the original problem. So now what we have to do is the antiderivative of 2x plus 3 plus my remainder over my divisor, x minus 3. And this is a nice antiderivative. 2x is the derivative of x squared. The antiderivative of 3 is 3x, and for the fraction, 1 is the derivative of x minus 3, which means this is a natural log. If the top is the derivative of the bottom, then you have a natural log of the bottom, and there is your answer for number 3. Number 4, again a fraction. My top is not the derivative of the bottom. I would need a 36x cubed, and I don't have that up there. And my top degree is already less than the bottom, so now I'm looking at other options. And this problem is in the inverse tangent template. If you can rewrite the denominator as 5 squared, and 9x to the fourth is the quantity of 3x squared squared. And your inverse tangent template is u prime over u squared plus a squared. And that would end up giving you 1 over a inverse tangent of u over a. And that's exactly what we're going to end up with here my u, the thing being squared, the variable squared is 3x squared. The derivative of that u would be my u prime. That would be 6x. I need a 6x on top. I can fix that by putting a 6 with that x and a 1, 6 out here. My a value is 5. And for the antiderivative part, 
the antiderivative of all this stuff, I am now in my template format. So it's u prime over u squared plus a squared, and that would be 1 over a, so 1 over 5, inverse tangent of u over a, which will be 3x squared over 5. But don't forget, there was a 1 6 in front of that, so we need to put all of that in parentheses. Actually, parentheses are not necessary, but I feel better with parentheses. And keep that 1 6 on the outside, and there is your answer. You can combine 1 6 and 1 5th. You can multiply those to be 1 30th if you want. Not necessary. Number five, again a fraction. This time top, top and bottom degrees don't really apply because of the radical thing. So um, you could think templates, inverse te trig templates, but 5 plus x cubed would not be a template. You'd need 5 minus something um, for the inverse sine template. This one is a traditional substitution. 5 plus x cubed is my u. The derivative of that would be 3x squared, which is exactly what we already have. So my u prime, or my du, is accounted for. This is my u, so you can substitute this into the antiderivative of 3x squared dx is my du. The 3x squared is in the du, so I'll put a 1 in the numerator. My denominator becomes the square root of u. And to do that antiderivative, we will bring that u up to the top, make it u to the negative 1 half. And we have a power rule. Negative 1 half plus 1 is positive 1 half. And you'll divide by 1 half, which is the same as multiplying by 2. Uh, so once I do the antiderivative, I've now applied the power rule. I will now plug my 5 plus x cubed back in the place of the u. So your answer could be 5 plus x cubed to the 1 half. You're dividing by 1 half. Uh, now if you do divide by 1 half, that's the same as multiplying by 2. So you could say 2 times that. And anything to the 1 half is the square root. So I kind of like the answer to like this. But any of these would be acceptable. Anything that is algebraically equivalent to my answer. 6 is probably one of the more difficult ones. Um, I see trig, and I'm looking for a memorized derivative. And for that, I would need a sine to the first or a cosine to the first. And I don't see that yet. So I'm going to break my sine cubed up into sine squared x times sine x. I'm going to leave cosine squared as cosine squared. And when I do that, I see a sine x. And if you group that sine x with the dx, that is a great potential du if I could let u equal cosine x. So that's what I'm going to try. If u is cosine x, my du would actually be negative sine, not positive sine. So I've got to fix that. I'm going to put a negative right here with this sign. When I put a negative with that sign, I'll put a negative out here. And then I need to substitute everything else out. My cosine squared, if u is cosine, that becomes u squared. Sine squared, I'm going to turn into 1 minus cosine squared using the Pythagorean identity. And 1 minus cosine squared would be 1 minus u squared. So now my antiderivative becomes the negative on the outside stays. 1 minus cosine squared is 1 minus u squared. Then I have cosine squared is u squared. And the negative sine x dx is my du. We'll distribute that u squared. That's u squared minus u to the fourth. And finally, we have a power rule. So negative and the antiderivative of u squared is u cubed over 3 minus u to the fifth over 5. And then we will plug my u back in. So my final answer would be negative. And then u is cosine x. So that would be cosine cubed x over 3 minus cosine to the fifth x over 5 plus c. Alright, on to the next three, and these three are definite integrals. So uh, that doesn't affect anything for the first 90% of the problem. You still have to find the antiderivative, but once you have the antiderivative, you then need to substitute the values in and subtract. So ignoring the 5 and the 3, this one is a u sub. That's the easiest way. You can expand this if you hate yourself or if you forget how to do u sub. But it's easiest to let u equal x minus 3. du is dx. And I've always said the most important part of substitution is making sure that your du is in the problem. And it is. So I can now substitute this. The dx becomes a du. 
x minus 3 is u, so that becomes u to the fifth. Pick up u to the fifth. The problem is I still have a leftover x that has to be replaced by its u equivalent. And for this problem, if u equals x minus 3, then I can add 3 to both sides of that equation and have u plus 3 is equal to x. So u plus 3 is going to take the place of that x. It's a double substitution problem. Then for the antiderivative, we will distribute the u to the fifth. So that'll be u to the sixth plus 3u to the fifth. And we have a nice clean power rule. u to the sixth over six. Nope, make that u to the seventh over seven. Plus 3u to the sixth over six. And there's the antiderivative in terms of u. Now we have to remember that this is a definite integral, so we have two options from this point. I can plug x minus 3 back in for the u and have x minus 3 to the 7th over 7 plus 3 times x minus 3 to the 6 over 6, then plug in 5 and 3, or, and this is what I like to do, I like to convert my limits of integration. 5 and 3 are values of x. They can only be plugged in for x. Do not plug 5 and 3 in for u. I can convert my limits to their u equivalent because I know that u is the same thing as x minus 3. So my u value, when my x is 3, that's my lower limit, would be 3 minus 3, which is 0. So I can now put a 0 for my lower limit here. And my u value, when x is 5, u of 5 would be 5 minus 3, which is 2. So my upper limit is 2. So now I can just plug in 0 and 2 for my u's, and I'll end up with 2 to the 7th over 7, plus 3 times 2 to the 6 over 6, and you can reduce the 3 over 6 to 1 over 2 if you want, minus, and if you plug in 0, you have a bunch of zeros, and there is your answer. That's how I prefer to finish that problem. On to number 8. This is another u sub, and a lot of y'all on this quiz, you don't know your trig derivatives. The number of people I saw calling u secant squared and du tangent was way too many. u is tangent x, and you should know that the derivative of tangent x is secant squared x. There's absolutely no reason at all for you not to know that by this point in the year. You should have known it by the end of October. So, I'm going to replace the secant squared dx, secant squared x dx, that is my du, and tangent x becomes u. So now I have the antiderivative of e to the u du, and the antiderivative of e to the u is e to the u. And again, it's a definite integral, so I'm going to convert my limits. My u value, when x is 0, is the tangent of 0, which you should know is 0, but you could plug that in the calculator. Tangent of 0 is 0. My u value at pi over 4 is the tangent of pi over 4, and the tangent of pi over 4 is 1. So now I can just plug 0 and 1 into this, and my final answer will be e to the first minus e to the 0, and e to the 0 is 1. So that would be e minus 1, or you can leave it as e to the first minus e to the 0. You can even leave it as e to the tangent of pi over 4, uh, yeah, minus e to the tangent of 0. That would have been fine. Number nine, here you see a natural log x and you should know the derivative of natural log x is one over x, which I have in the problem. So this is a u sub where u is natural log x, du is one over x dx. And if you want to put a one in the numerator to see the full du, you can, it's not necessary, but one over x dx is my du. This will turn into the antiderivative of one over x dx is du. My numerator is the natural log of x cubed, and u is the natural log of x, so that's u cubed. And then we have a nice antiderivative, u to the fourth over four. And convert the limits. My u value, when x is one, would be the natural log of one, which is zero. My u value, when x is e, is the natural log of e, which is one. And now I can evaluate this, u to the fourth over four, from zero to one. Which gives me a final answer of 1 to the 4th over 4 minus 0 to the 4th over 4, which ends up being just 1 4th. Which is a 
I would have accepted the unsimplified version of 1 to the 4th over 4 minus 0 to the 4th over 4. And number the last is a u sub problem where all you have to do is convert the integral into u's. You don't have to actually solve it. As a matter of fact, you cannot find the sampod derivative. First thing I would do, all I'm asking for is the values of c, a, and b. When you convert this to f of u, I would start by finding the limits of integration. If x is 3 and x is 1, my new limits of integration, my u value when x is 1 is 1 squared plus 2. That would be 3. My u value when x is 3 is 3 squared plus 2, which is 11. 11. And that is your a and your b. That is going to be the limits of integration. Now, I do need to account for the du. So let's look at that. So if u is x squared plus 2, the derivative of that is 2x dx. And I need to see 2x dx in my problem. I have a 4. So there are a couple of ways to fix this. Probably the easiest would be to simply multiply the 4 by a 1 half. So I'm going to multiply by 1 half up here and half of 4. That is now equal to 2x. But if I multiply my numerator by 1 half, I have to multiply by the reciprocal out here. That would be 2 over 1. So it, after my substitution, this turns into 2 antiderivative. My x's of 1 and 3 are now u's of 3 and 11. I do have a fraction. The numerator, half of 4x, which is 2x dx, is my du. I'm going to put a 1 up here. And pause for a sec. Okay, so let's finish this. So I, I plugged in my 1 du for all of this stuff up here. The denominator is the square root of the sine of x squared plus 2, but x squared plus 2 is u, so that's the square root of sine u. And that's really the full substitution, although all I asked for were the values of a, b, and c. And so a and b are my lower and upper limits, and c is this constant in front. So for me, my a value is 3, my b value is 11, and my c value is 2. That is all I wanted.